Welcome back to Switched to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And I got a new email today from a, a new visitor that uh, asks, how do you get started with Linux? So I want to go ahead and do a Top 5 about this. What are the Top 5 ways? Because I know there's a lot of people concerned about Windows and spying and Mac or maybe concerned about the fact that some software is just getting so expensive and so you've heard about Linux and maybe you've stumbled upon my channel or one of the other Linux channels out there and uh, you, you're wanting to know how do I switch over to start using Linux? Do we use Linux for absolutely everything, whatever else? And so I wanted to go ahead and answer that question with, um, with this top five video. So number one, you want to spend some time researching what Linux distros there are. Um, you don't want to just hear one or two things on the internet and just grab one of these and jump right on in. I would really encourage you to pick five or six different ones. Visit, maybe visit their websites. Unfortunately, most Linux websites don't have a lot of good information. The best thing to do, check out some of the videos on this channel or on DistroTube's channel or other places that review uh, review Linux um, distros and watch some of those videos and leave some comments and some questions. I know my channel, my viewers are generally very kind and open to uh, to answering questions. DistroTube is much the same way. Leave things over on his channel uh, next to his reviews. Um, I'm more of a user focused person. DistroTube is more of a technical focused person. So you get slightly different reviews in those. He knows a lot more about under the hood Linux. I know, I'm not sure which one of us would know more about the front end use, but I'm a guy that moved to Linux because of challenges with Windows. I didn't like what they were doing and I'm not just going to sit there and install some third party and trust that that's going to save, you know, protect my privacy. I'm going to protest and not use Windows anymore. Period. And so Mac was out for me. I use Windows, I use Mac, I use Linux every day as part of my job. And so I'm looking at this and going Ah, uh, Mac's not an option either, but I've heard about this Linux thing, so let's learn about it. And uh, and that's the thing is I, I, I stopped and I learned some distros. Now, I jumped into Ubuntu pretty quick um, because I had extra computers, extra capability running different operating systems. Um, so I jumped into Ubuntu pretty quick. Um, I would encourage you, though, to look at different systems, realize that Linux has a package base which determines what software is available, how frequently it's updated, things like that. But then it contains a desktop environment, two components to GNU Linux. Okay, and you'll hear people talk about Linux or GNU Linux. Um, generally, any is okay. Um, a desktop environment is how your system works. How does it look? Uh, we have Cinnamon is my favorite. We have XFCE, Mate. We have GNOME or GNOME. We have KDE. Um, LXDE, there's Budgie, there's Deepin, there's a lot of different desktops. All of these determine what you actually see on your computer, which is separate from how your computer works under the hood. So research some Linux distros, figure out what type of distro you want, figure out what type of desktop environment you want. I personally recommend Linux Mint Cinnamon for most people because it's very easy to install. It doesn't require terminal or command line work. It resembles Windows the most out of the box and it's still a modern UI. Um, other people have different opinions. I like other distro uh, or other desktops as well, but your first task is to learn and research. Know what budgie means and, and know the difference between you know budgie, uh, Solace, uh, which developed the budgie desktop and Manjaro running budgie. Know what the difference between that is. Um, and we're not saying become an expert. We're just have a little bit of familiarity ask yourself some questions, research your Linux distros. Number two, do not abandon your main OS right away. There's nothing that's going to get you frustrated with Linux more than if you've totally wiped your, your Windows or your Apple computer and you're wanting to, you know, dive right on into Linux and you just jump right on in there and, and now you can't figure out how to get stuff done. You're frustrated, but you're mad because you forgot to do a backup. You don't know how to restore your computer and now you're just mad at the whole Linux community as a large. Don't do that. Don't abandon your OS. I still do development on Windows 7, mostly because the Windows 7 computer hasn't died. 
I do have a Windows 10 computer here. It's never turned on. I only use it if I have to answer a Windows 10 specific question. Otherwise, it does not get used, period. Um, I will not do any work or development on it. Uh, but I'm not switching cold turkey to Linux because I have a perfectly fine working Windows computer. It already has the software I've been using. I've been using that computer for eight or nine years now. I'm not just going to wipe it and put Linux on it right now because it's still a good viable computer. It does my work. And that's my next tip is do not abandon your OS right away. Now, if you only have one computer, here's my recommendation. I you need to use whatever operating system you need to use for the things you have to do. But separate what you have to do and what you're familiar with. We are going to get into that in another couple points here. Okay. Um, but don't abandon your OS right away. What you need to do is figure out how you can figure out how to work on Linux while maintaining some things on your Windows or your existing Mac machine. Okay, so figuring all of those things out is, is key. But you don't want to get rid of your main OS while you're tinkering with the other one. You want to keep it around so you can get your things done. But my recommendation is anybody should be using Linux for your basic stuff, particularly your personal information stuff. If you do online banking, if you're connecting to social networks, if you're doing any of that type of stuff, you should be doing that on a Linux computer because you have more security and more privacy on a Linux computer. Some people may argue Windows is very secure but not very private. That's probably true. I would say Linux is just as secure as Windows, but it's infinitely more private. Okay. So you have to, um, you have to, uh, keep that in mind. Um, so figure out ways that you can not abandon your original OS. That means you might be dual booting, which I don't always recommend. Uh, you might be running on an external key. You might jump onto Craigslist, eBay, or some local Facebook buying selling group and find another computer, just a cheap beater computer that you can throw Linux on and start tinkering with it. So that is your number two. Don't abandon your main OS right away. We want to get you comfortable and ease you into using Linux so you do not get frustrated. This leads us right into number three. Now I have here in my description down there, uh, start with a live key. It doesn't have to be a live key. This means live key. It could mean dual booting. Uh, I have a great video about how to do a safer dual boot. I never put two operating systems on the same hard drive. I don't do that um, because they can fight with each other a little bit. There's some, some issues. You could accidentally wipe out your main partition. But if you happen to have a desktop computer, most desktop computers can support extra hard drives. Even if you don't have a hard drive in there, if you simply take off the two screws on the back, take off one side panel, there is an extra bay and SATA port for another hard drive. You can pick up a hard drive for 50 bucks, pick up a SATA cable for 10 bucks, plug it all in. You don't need a computer technician to do that. And then what I recommend is you unplug your first drive where your probably Windows operating system is, install Linux on that second drive, and then plug your Windows computer back in. This then will allow you to choose which hard drive you boot off of. Okay, and most computers it's the F12 key, although it could be the F11 or the F9 key, particularly HP's F9 key. It pulls up a boot menu. This will say which hard disk would you like to run the boot sector for. You want to run the boot sector from the first hard drive to run Windows, run the boot sector from the second hard drive to run uh, to run Linux. Now the way I usually do this is I use live keys. Now with a, with a USB key, I say live key, there are two ways to run Linux on a little CD key. One is you can actually install Linux on this and it will be a full installation. The second is what you call a live key. A live key is you go on the internet, you download a copy of the distro, and then you burn that onto this drive, boot off of this drive, and you don't install anything, that's called a live key. Most Linux distros have a live key option. It's a way that you can test the distribution without actually installing it. But if we're actually, uh, if we are actually going to be playing with it, installing it, making it our own, you want to install on it. And Linux fortunately can install on one of these guys. You could use these um, if you're really 
more hardcore about learning it, you want to pick up an external hard drive. The external hard drive is awesome. It runs a whole lot better on your CD keys or your USB keys. You'll probably get a little bit of more hiccupy. It doesn't run quite as smooth. It is definitely acceptable. I use these a lot. Um, but the hard drive is the better option for experimenting with Linux distros. So you can install the distro on a hard drive or an external uh, CD key on an extra hard drive in your computer itself and then boot off of Linux. And then you just change your BIOS settings to boot off the key if it's plugged in or off the hard drive if it's not. And you might have to look up how to do that on your particular BIOS system. But that is our number three, is you start with, you just start with a live key or something installed on a USB or a hard drive or whatever else, uh, just so you can get, uh, get used to it. Number four, research required tasks. I should have probably said required tasks instead of tasks required, but that's okay. Uh, research your required tasks. What do I mean by this? A lot of stumbling blocks people have when they want to move over to a Linux system is they jump over to Linux and they say, how do I install Photoshop on here? Or how do I install Word on here? Or how do I install you know, X name your program on this computer? Linux uses different software. Now there are some software that are called cross platform. What that means is they will install on a variety of different platforms. A lot of the, the, uh, a lot of the software you use on Linux, you can also run on Windows or on Mac. Okay. And that might be another way to, to dive into this and testing this is figure out what the software is and install that on your existing computer and try using that software instead. And by the way, it's going to be hard at first. You're going to boot up LibreOffice instead of Microsoft Word, you know, uh, Microsoft Office. You boot it up and they function very similar. They will be just about the same, but there is always a learning curve when you switch to new software. There's even a learning curve when you switch to a new version of an existing software. Take the time to learn it. Don't get frustrated when you install a complicated program like GIMP and go, I just can't figure this out. Take the time to figure this out. This is why we're not abandoning the old OS right away. If you use Photoshop to do your, your weekend hobby projects, figure out how to do those on GIMP. When I first moved over to installing GIMP on a computer, it was so hard to use. I had no idea despite having years of pro, uh, proficiency in Photoshop. Nowadays, I am perfectly fluent in both of them. I don't care if I boot up Photoshop or if I boot up GIMP. I can do accomplish the same tasks in the same speed. In fact, GIMP is actually better when you learn how to use both systems. There's a lot of things that they work a little bit better and a little bit faster than Photoshop. Not everything, for sure. Um, GIMP doesn't do, for example, batch automation. So if I want to do batch automation, I have to drop into a, a command line terminal, figure out how to do that. Um, but there's, and with the new release of GIMP 2.10, which I haven't played with extensively yet, they have just raised the bar so much higher on GIMP. So don't ask, can I install X software? Ask, what is the task X software gets used for? If we're writing documents, that doesn't mean you have to use Word. That is the exact thing Microsoft has been drilling into your head for way too long. Stop doing that. Stop thinking Photoshop every time you need to edit a software package. If your objective is to edit, so edit a photo, look at GIMP, look at Krita. There's numerous other applications available for that are cross-platform that you can use instead of paying the monthly subscription fee to Adobe for the rest of your life for an application that a free version does everything just about as well, okay? research what the tasks you need to accomplish on, on your computer and figure out how to do those on Linux. If you need to keep spreadsheets, you have LibreOffice Calc. If you're trying to do uh, business accounting and things like that, you have GNU Cache, but a lot of people are going to cloud-based services anyway. A cloud-based service works the same way. Chrome is available. I don't recommend it, but you can get Chrome on, on Linux. You can get Firefox. There's also Chromium. There's Midori. There's Conqueror. There are so many good web browsers out there. Figure out the tasks and don't ask, how do I install X software on Linux? Ask, how do I accomplish the same task on Linux? It'll make you a better person to learn more software, by the way. 
Then number five, once you've figured out your distro, you have tested a few of them in live keys, you've figured out what the tasks are, you've learned a little bit of the new software, now make the switch. Go ahead now and spend more of your time in Linux only dropping into your old operating system when there's something you can't figure out. But anytime you do that, ask some people questions. Ask how you might accomplish that. Um, what are the other applications that would be uh, that would be be similar? And then make that switch. Have that courage to make that switch. Linux is a powerful system. It, you can get systems that require a whole lot more user work. You can get systems that are set up and you never have to think about them again. There are so many different advantages to using Linux. And I encourage you to dive into it, learn it, use it. And anywhere where you don't absolutely have to use, uh, use the, the proprietary operating systems, you should be using Linux. So go ahead and make that switch. So thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support for all of the ways that you can help support us. There is also a shop available. You want to pick up a t-shirt, a coffee cup. I also have some very nice Switch to Linux mouse pads here. These are available at shop.switchtolinux.com. And uh, you can also check out the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. So thanks for making it to the end of the video, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.